Inspiring interviews with today's top landlords. This is the Rental Income Podcast. And now, Dan Lane. Brian, so tell me about the property manager. What what happened? Well, we hired a property manager for our first uh, first few units, and then all was good for a while. However, in the end, he ended up embezzling over $30,000 from us. That is a ton of money. And on the podcast today, we're going to figure out how something like this could happen. We'll have Ryan share his story. We'll see what he's learned from going through this and see how you can avoid having your property manager rip you off. The other thing that we're going to talk about is how Ryan is doing things different today. He's figured out a better way to manage his rental properties, and we'll have him walk through exactly what he's doing today and see if maybe you can pick up some tips and tricks to manage your properties better. Joining us on the show today from Kenny Bunk, Maine, is Ryan Bolduck. We'll take a quick break to thank our sponsors. We'll come right back, and we'll talk to Ryan. We all know that hiring a property manager is expensive. Of course, you can always manage yourself, but... After you have a few properties, you can pretty easily find yourself drowning in phone calls, bookkeeping, and other management tasks. I want to let you know about a better and cheaper way to manage your rental portfolio. It's with a virtual professional from Worker Gen X. They can handle repair requests, make sure your rent's collected, help you track expenses for tax time. They can even handle inquiries when you have a turnover. Pretty much anything you need, they can do for you. And they'll do it all at a fraction of the cost of what a property manager charges. You also won't need to spend your time training your professional. Worker Gen X has employees that are trained and ready to hit the ground running for you. You can find out more at WorkerGenX.com. That's Worker, W-O-R-K-E-R-G-E-N-I-X.com. WorkerGenX.com. It's a lot of work to find a really good rental property. And when you actually find that property, you want to make sure you're working with a lender that can get that loan closed. The lender that I recommend is Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. She's a nationwide lender and her specialty is helping investors finance rental properties. She has a ton of loan programs and she can find something customized to you for your situation. If you want to find out more or you're ready to get started today, just go to RidgeLendingGroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E LendingGroup.com. NMLS 42056. Rental Income Podcast. How many units were you at when you hired your property manager? Uh, We were at 11 units at that time, uh, which gets kind of, can be, take a lot of bit of time with uh, a lot of renovations and, and tenant turnover, the communications, plowing, yeah. you know, all the stuff that goes into it. So we were at 11 units. All right. So you were feeling maybe a little bit overwhelmed, busy with your day job. You hired a property manager. And then when did, did everything start out pretty good with them? Uh, yeah. I mean, they always told me what I wanted to hear and, you know, not having much experience utilizing management companies. Um, I would find errors in the reporting and being an engineer, I would kneel down into everything and then redline the heck out of it and then send it back to them. And then they would modify it for the next month. But I would, you know, I'd, I'd kind of see errors each time, but then just thought it was, oh, they're not as detailed as I am type of thing. And, uh, and then, you know, by the end notice that a lot more money was not there than was supposed to be. So the errors that you were finding, what like what kind of like what were they doing? Like what what kind of errors were were you finding? Uh, just billing things to the wrong properties, um, okay. you know, and contract, and then having the rents on the wrong months of when they came in, and 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 things okay. like that. Just not the way that you know we do things now. Essentially, so, do you think th- those were honest mistakes, or they were sloppy, or w- was that the beginning of them stealing from you? I think it was just very, a lot of sloppiness. Okay. Um, yeah. And who knows what else was going on behind the scenes at this time, but definitely not what they were paying to attention, attention to the most. All right. So then with stealing the 30,000, was that like all at once or were they just taking a little bit at a time? Well, it was basically the last two months of rent. So Um, you know, they would collect rent and then pay you out on the 15th of the following month. Mm. Um, so then by the, say the 15th of January, they would have had 
um, November, uh, December's rent. Plus they would have already co- collected all of January. Right. So they would have two months of rent, which in my case would have been slightly over 30,000, um, plus security deposits that they had taken, um, for units they, they had leased. And then additionally, um, they took some rent relief COVID money, which, you know, paid out upwards of three to six months at a time that they got deposited directly into their account. Um, and then other things where they didn't pay vendors and I paid for it. So, well, so, I mean, it sounds like, so the rent alone was 30,000. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, it's it was way around, more than that. Yeah, 30,000 in rents. And then there was other costs. It could have been anywhere from 30 to 40. Wow. Okay. Not how you want to start out. With, no, you know. no. So did they just, did they just say, we're not paying you this money or we're, we're closing up shop? Is that how it ended? Just, yeah. It was kind of dear John. <laughs> oh. Um, you never really got anything back. We, he walked, uh, like walked a flip with me one day and then the next day I could never get a hold of him. Um, so then next thing I knew some other people that re- used this person, I mean, I think he was managing at least a thousand units in Maine. Um, so other people had contacted me that used them and let me know that they, you know, get, get everything you can out of there blah, blah, blah. Wow. Um, something was going on. So, so what do you think, what do you think happened with him? Like, did, did he just, do you think he was in financial trouble and just looked at stealing everyone's money as a way out of it? Or do you think that this was his big plan to, to run off with everyone's money? Cause it's, he took 30,000 from you, but if he's running a thousand units, I mean, that's hundreds of thousands of dollars that he's Yeah, it's taking. millions a month. Yeah. You know, it's over a million a month. Uh, yeah, wow. no, there were some people that had hundreds of thousands of just rent. Um, wow. And uh, I'm not sure, you know, what his whole thing was. It could have been Ponzi scheme type things and investing in other things with right. the money. And then once somebody said, I need to pull my units out or something like that, you know, one of the bigger folks could have done that. And then all of a sudden there's no one to pay from this person to that person. Um, you know, and we heard a lot of things. It was the accountant that I was using. Um, but I never really got much closure, closure on it. There was a lot of lawyers involved. We tried to get like the attorney general involved. Um, I didn't see much movement. I went to six or seven police departments, filed reports, um, you know, in each of the places that we had units and, or where they had offices. Um, but I basically had to end up chalking it up as a loss Mm. versus I I just waited as my time versus, you know, spending months and months and who knows how many tens of thousands of dollars in legal fees. Um, for me, I was, I was small potatoes compared to, you know, other folks that, you know, were, were going to get hit by him. Did he just vanish? Um, I believe he was working somewhere else, um, in the state of New Hampshire, possibly. Um, I honestly don't know much about it anymore. Um, I believe there may have been some liens put against him personally and may have filed bankruptcy. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure. It's almost like one of those things you just, uh, (laughs) yeah, all right, I'll hear it through the grapevine. Um, and, uh, just, be a lot more on my toes whenever anyone's dealing with collecting my rents right. or my money or anything like that. So you've learned from this and you've figured out a better way to manage your property. So l- let's talk about what you're doing today for management. Explain to me how you have how you have everything set up to manage your properties. Uh, yeah. So <clears throat> what we do is, again, everything is whatever property or portfolio. They have their own bank accounts with, you know, checking accounts, uh, security deposit accounts. And we have a third party management company that does everything remote. Um, however, every decision, every, you know, um, transaction goes through, again, my wife or myself for approval. Um, so just throughout the day, you know, things will come up and, yep, that's OK. Go ahead and do that. Um, and it's all done remotely and we, they're kind of the conduits and the in-between for, you know, whether it's housing, whether it's the tenants, whether it's vendors, and then we get involved with the approval, the review process. And, um, and then we pay them, you know, at the end of the month, they'll invoice us. And then we say, okay, yep, this is approved or, Hey, you double dipped here. 
um, drop the drop it by five hundred, and then go ahead and withdraw it from our account into okay. yours. So, so is is this an actual management company, or is this something that you've set up on your own? Um, it it is a management company. Um, I'm working, we work pretty close with them to help develop some of the systems as you know, they took on a lot and we grew okay. together at the same time. So I, it sounds like the key to making this work was that, that you, you found a management company that was kind of starting out. Is that right? Cause I, I'm just thinking like, if I told my mat, my property manager that I was going to use building them now and we're going to do it this way. I feel like they would fire me as a customer because they have their own systems and their own way of doing things. And they wouldn't want me being that involved. Like, correct. So like, how did, how did you get over that? Is it just that they were a new company? Uh, I mean, they had their own ways, but they were looking to get into a different software as well. Um, so they viewed it as I think looking at the way I was doing it. And then, you know, they were, they were looking at Buildium or Appfolio so it gave them kind of a trial run too on the buildium without having to actually try the buildium, um, and then they they ultimately settled on Appfolio from moving from their previous uh, software that they were using, uh, and they were they're just you know very easy to work with, and like I said, we were looking to grow, and you know we added 40, 50, 60 units in a, like a six month period, so you know it was a lot of growth for them you know, mm-hmm. within, uh, within a small geographic okay. area. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, like I said, great, per- great people. And they were just easy to work with most management companies. Like you said, wouldn't even take us on. Right. Um, you know, and especially if you have 11 units, um, in our market is like, ah, we don't really want to take yeah. you on there. Right. And, um, and that's the, that is one of the small problem or bigger problems in a small market. You know, you hear people talk about, I won't invest anywhere where there's not at least seven good property managers to choose from. It's like, well, in some markets, there's like one right, to choose right. from. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, and what we've been able to do is they can manage a lot of our properties from afar. So we can go into multiple markets without having boots on the ground now, utilizing them as the management company. Oh, wow. So are you investing in a couple different areas? Yeah, we're in, I'm in two, as of now, two to three different markets in Maine. Um, they're over probably an hour and a half to an hour and hour and a half to two hours away from each other. So what's the advantage of that? Like what, how are the markets different? Um, well, there's different, uh, different tenant class, different rates, um, you know, different vendors. Um, so in one area they have a lot of boots on the ground. Um, and it's, a you know, it's a little bit lower price ratio and things like that, where my original 11 units are and where I have, you know, 20 or so now down here. Um, it's a much, the rents are much higher. The price per units are much higher. Um, the tenant class is more of a business professional versus blue collar, which is, you know, what I have a lot of up there. Um, and then it's just, again, finding, the hardest thing is always getting people to do work nowadays. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that that's kind of the biggest thing. But I mean, if you've got nowadays, it's not like in the 80s when people had to manage properties. Nowadays with software and everything is through a text and everyone can pay online and, you know, you don't need to physically be there um, at all times to manage a property. We've developed some good relationships with local contractors, which took six years <laughs> yeah. to get those people you trust and then they become the boots on the ground. Um, so I have two or three in, in those markets where we can say, Hey, we have a showing. Can you go over there and show or, Oh, Hey, this person's step is loose. Can you just run over and check on it? You know, they, they'll handle a lot of that stuff. Um, or this, this, uh, contractor needs to be let in today. Can you get over there and make sure that the unit's open and, and they have access to move the fridge? Um, so partnering with local contractors, you can trust using remote, um, management, you know, has allowed us to, you know, add quite a few units since we joined yeah. with them. Well, why even have the management company? Cause it, it seems like you're, you're really involved and you're, you're kind of doing a lot of the management or at least overseeing the management. Why even have them involved in this? Well, when you have to talk to 80 units worth of tenants, that can get 
a little onerous. Okay. Onerous. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's that's a lot. You know. Oh, getting the collection, getting the rent, uh, dispatching the work orders. You know, all okay. of that stuff is everything that they can handle. Hey, I need three quotes for such and such, and then they'll get the quotes. You know, and they'll work with them. And then, you know, again, my wife and I will work with the contractor at that point to be like, okay, this is exactly what we need. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of back and forth with that many times. Yeah. Okay. Um, that makes sense. That makes sense. And then sense. if housing is involved, then you've got to, you know, set up showings, schedulings, insurance has always got to get in there, code enforcement. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a lot that goes along. Yeah. Um, like I said, even 11 units became kind of, uh, onerous for us to, to do, um, without good systems in place before, you know, before we got software involved. Would it be cheaper to, to hire someone like to have your own property manager? Like, um, so <clears throat> when you hire one person, if they leave, then you're screwed. Oh, that's a great so point. That's, that's a really good point. <clears throat> yep. So, and my rate is based on how much I'm involved as well. So it's not, like a full rate based on what, you know, someone else is that's completely hands off. Okay. Um, yeah. So we, we've built that in and then I do have a dedicated person that works with us, um, that does our books that works for the company, but is a direct hire to us. Um, and he does, if we need anything personally done, we can just talk to him and then he'll take care of it. Um, and like I said, if somebody, if somebody on their team quits, that's not my problem. Right. You know what I mean? And, uh, and then if I hire somebody, invest all the time into them, and then all of a sudden I'm going away for three weeks and they decide they're going to leave, then I'm left holding the yeah, bag. Right. And my life has kind of gotten thrown upside down. Or if they're sick one day, you've got to take over. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now we can at least say, all right, how much do we want to be involved? How much do we not want to be involved? Um, we okay, have that option yeah. now. And then you, you just pay a, a smaller amount than somebody would pay if they were getting the full property management service. Right. Exactly. Yeah. If they were no involvement, they just get their check at the end of every month. You know, that's a different service, I'm assuming, you know, yeah. versus, you know, what we're what we're looking at. Um, so it, it's it's cost effective and it's definitely worth because, um, I mean, with I think we're, and my wife and I, we have it, it's hard to remember 60, 80 units. It's hard to remember. Um, cause we sell, sold some and then, uh, so I mean, that would definitely be a full-time job, yeah. you know, for her. So now it's more of a part-time job for her versus full-time, um, you know, having to deal with that. Ryan is on Instagram and if you want to follow him, I've got a link to it on my website. You can find it at rentalincomepodcast.com slash episode 440. I'd like to thank Chay Lee Ridge from Ridge Lending Group for sponsoring today's episode. If you're looking to buy a rental property, whether you're just getting started or you want to add to your portfolio, reach out to Chay Lee. She's got a ton of different loan programs and she can find something that'll work for you in your situation. You can find out more or set up a time to talk to Chay Lee at RidgeLendingGroup.com. That's R I D G E lendinggroup.com nmls42056 and be sure to mention the rental income podcast and she will credit you back $250 at closing thank you so much for checking out the podcast today i'll be back with a new episode next tuesday my name is dan lane and this has been the rental income podcast